There's like a bunch of different ways I can start this episode, and I was trying to decide which one's like the most attention grabbing. I can't, I can't decide. So I'm gonna go the complete opposite direction. We're starting with the basics. And the basics would be that last episode, as I sit down to record this, we had seven likes, which is pretty good because I'm recording this one on a pretty quick turnaround. It hasn't even been 24 hours yet since I uploaded the last one. And I'm just, I'm just trying to get everything back on schedule. I've said this a bunch of times in the last couple episodes, but I want this to be, you know, three times a week. And ideally, that would be the same three days that I used to post White Sox March to October, which was typically Sundays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, but then again if I if I do end up getting this video up on Sunday That'll be a miracle because it's 5 15 in the evening on Sunday right now But anyway, I'm see I'm already going off on tangents But we got the seven likes so with our new like system of each like being worth 250 stubs Seven likes instead of just being worth 700 stubs like it used to be is now worth 1750 so that alone is enough for an extra pack right there so if you're watching this right now and you haven't hit that like button yet man do it likes are very valuable now in this series so then continuing to knock off the basics i put everything we pulled from the last pack opening on the market and the profit was well not profit i shouldn't say profit because profit would imply that we made stubs on the packs which we didn't but the revenue came out to be 6068 stubs adding that into our stub bank gives us 8800 so we uh we definitely depleted that when we bought the field of dreams pack in the last one but i'd say it's worth it to get another high overall but speaking of that field of dreams pack i guess this just leads in perfectly to another thing i gotta i gotta mention and that potentially is why i'm kind of feeling a little frazzled before we've even started here is because we're on a 14 game win streak guys and as we know in our stub stipulations or rewards which i guess i should mention because i haven't mentioned in a while all of those are listed in the description of each video if you're ever confused about something but every fifth win as part of a win streak is like the wins times a thousand stubs so if we're at 14 we're going for 15 wins in this episode a win alone from the win streak would give us 15,000 stubs so like that gives us a very good chance of making 30,000 stubs in this episode alone and if we do that we're picking up another field of dreams pack so there's a lot at stake for this game but another thing i have to get into before we start is i, I didn't make it easy on you guys i, I was kind of confusing because i recorded that last episode before the last roster update but in that episode i hadn't gone over the previous roster update yet and how it affected our team so last episode when i talked about how our team was different now it's different again, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So with now the newest roster update, we did have a couple changes. Uh, I, I know Vlad got some differences, I don't think it changed his overall. Yuli went down one overall, but he still pretty much looks the same. And then Olsen again, I think he got knocked down a bit to righties again, but he got upgraded against lefties. So it's almost preferable at this point, especially with his inside edge to go lefty lefty with him. So yeah, actually we definitely want to be facing lefties because he's our only lefty and he hits lefties better. And then on the pitching side of the ball, I think Brad Hand went down one. I think Karen Chak went down two. I don't remember. I, I think Chad Green stayed the same but Gallegos he went from an 84 to an 83 Matt Barnes went down one overall and Liam Hendricks went up one overall and then finally in terms of new additions to the squad I pulled Salvador Perez out of the uh the headliner pack and he just so happened to get even more upgrades to his numbers against lefties and <laughs> And he's got a crazy inside edge today. So yeah, he uh, he joined the bench over Nelson Cruz now to face lefties. So that is that is an insane bat to have coming off the bench against a lefty. And man, we got rid of also. It just dawned on me we got rid of Yelich right at the right time. I cannot believe it happened. But he's a silver now. Can you? We pulled him for this series all the way back in episode four, and then episode five, his debut game. That was the most viewed episode of pack attack to date by a lot he was an 88 overall now he's a 79 not even on the squad that's that's unbelievable kind of sad to be honest but one last thing i want to do and i'm trying not to take up 
a crazy amount of time again for the intro but originally i wanted to look at the stats like every five games and it dawned on me after the last episode that i don't think i've ever looked at the stats <laughs> so i'm gonna try not to get carried away here but we're gonna look at just some overall stats for some of our players here see who's doing the best we've had kershaw since episode one and he's actually kind of been our worst pitcher he's got an era over four six starts he's the only one with a loss but the crazy thing man otani is ridiculous he's pitched 19 innings he has 43 strikeouts and then his era is under one whip 0.37 but the only thing is, so far for us, he's literally only been a pitcher because he hasn't done anything at the plate yet. But yeah, going down here, Luis Castillo is still one of our better pitchers, even only after two outings. But he threw that perfect game for us. Granted, it was only after seven innings, but the guy quit, so we called it a perfect game. And then we kind of looked at this in the last one, but relief pitchers, I just... We haven't used relief pitching a ton. Just hasn't been much of a need for it. In recent episodes, I think we have. And our bullpen has pretty much been solid but then at catcher gary's still our best catcher and we probably at this point would have been better off keeping him or keeping grandall because grandall was good but rio muto dude's our highest overall on the team he doesn't have a hit yet and 11 at bats he's got to get it going man six strikeouts too i don't know if he'll ever get a hit at this point i used him on my main account also i remember this and i think i got one hit with him in like 25 at bats playing the event but then listed at first base we've also had olsen since the first episode Yuli not too long after. Olsen has probably been our best player overall. 21 hits, 9 bombs. We've had Biggio for a while too. He's he's in center now, but he's doing all right. If you look at the batting average, it's probably and on base especially it's probably not what you'd want a leadoff hitter to be and then we actually we've only had one official third baseman justin turner and he was pretty solid for us when we used him but then at short we've had story for a while and he's been pretty solid five bombs batting 275 slugging 627 but then yeah man we had we had marcus simeon way back when he was a silver wish i would have held on to him at this point and then in left field your don you could also make the argument he's been our best player over Olsen he's got 23 hits nine homers OPS of 1100 and then we had Yelich for a while amazing how quick he went downhill and then Eloy he's coming up he's been playing I can't believe he's already played 12 games with us it doesn't feel like that much but he's got eight total hits five of them for home runs so even though he's only batting 229 with a 270 on base his OPS is almost a thousand We've also never really had a, a center fielder, because remember there's that period of time where everyone in our outfield was a common, because we had Yelich in center. And then finally right field, haven't really had anybody there either. It's been all left fielders that we just spread out across the outfield. So I think that covers everything I wanted to go over before we start. So we can get into the game now, we got our ace on the mound, Porcello, full energy. He's been really good for us, and he's got to have another really good game too, because this is probably the most important win of the entire series so far, if we can pick it up. All right, so what do we got? Who do we got to face off against? It's going to be one of the bad ones. Oh no, it's Glavin. Okay, we're fine. He looked like he had a pretty high-powered offense, though. And he's got about a 500 record. Okay. It, it might, this might not be a given. Might have to work for this one. I feel like I've gone both ways with Glavin. Sometimes I hit him really well. Sometimes I just can't figure him out. Here we go. Get him rolling over on the first pitch. Judging by his first two swings, he seems to be like gearing up for the harder stuff, which is good because Porcello doesn't throw hard. There we go. Yeah, way out in front of that. Nice play, Canerco. Good first two outs. He rolled over the slider. This is going to be... Okay, yeah. Good play. And we're good. No strikeouts, but no hard contact either. I want to jump out to an early lead, though. I'll feel so much better if I can do that. Did he get enough of that? I think that's making it to the gap. Oh, perfect. I'm going to keep him at second. Lead off double for Biggio. He's been leading off the game really nice. I don't know if he does much the rest of the game, but leading off, he seems to get it done. Oh, I almost just needed to wait back a little more. He went with the hard stuff, and Vlad didn't hit it hard enough. No, I didn't. No part of my brain told me to swing at that. That was all my right hand. 
No, what? Oh no, I blew it. I blew the leadoff double. You can't do that. Didn't even move him over at any point. No. I love the weak contact if it's not finding a spot to land. That's just unearned. Very early. No part of him was on that. No, we can't have that. We can't have that. Oh. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. Are you kidding me at this point? Somebody's playing a joke on me? Okay, you had second if you just... Got him. Alright, now I can't be mad about that. It's all good. Oh, he's stealing. Oh, no, I want to use Real Muto's arm. That gets him. He's not going. He's stealing this time. And you can't, you can't make this up. What is he doing? I mean, thank you for the two free outs this inning, but he should he shouldn't even gotten them to land in the first place. He had three blue pits. All right, JT, buddy, you gotta break out of this slump. Dude, <laughs> he can hit it hard foul, and then he just. Uh, Yuli, that one's blasted. Maybe we can get it done with a two-out double. If he was smart, he'd walk me. Guess he's not smart. Ah, well, it doesn't matter how smart he is if I just suck. Alright. Much better inning there. Still weak contact, but it didn't have eyes this time. Oh, I was... I was so ready for that. Oh, uh, you're gonna tell me that's just going straight foul, but all of his swings that he's gotten so far. Come on, carry for me. Yeah, I missed it. Never mind. Yes, Vlad! Thank you! Still not even the best PCI, but if you're gonna get a round on it when it's up there, it's gotta leave. That's his first with the team. I didn't realize that, but yeah. Oh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to walk somebody to bring up Eloy. Oh, I beat it into the ground. I can never judge the break on Glavin's circle change. Like, it either doesn't break as much as I think it will and I get under it, or it breaks too much and I get on top of it. I'm feeling way better, though. Way better now that it's tied. There we go, I like that better. Eliminate the possibility for a cheesy hit if we just strike him out. Never stood a chance on that slider. Are you kidding me? Oh, that was so good. Three, four, five, all down in order on strikeouts. Let's just keep doing that. Oh no. Oh, I should have been all over that. Oh, and he did it again. Wait a second. That had to be, yeah. He had to be. I was gonna say, there's no way that leaves. Oh, uh, JT! That's like, that's like on a T. Oh! Oh! He, he got one! He did it! Oh man, JT showed up finally in a big way, too. Not just a blue pit. He waited this long to take one deep. Here we go, get crafty a little bit. There we go. I think he was trying to be patient there until we got two strikes, but Porcello can dot, man. There we go. There we go. Just took a couple extra pitches. That's fine. Oh, and he couldn't hold up on the curve. That's six straight strikeouts now. Something's changed. He can't touch Porcello anymore. See what I mean with Biggio? He'll lead off the game with a, with a hit, and he can't do anything else. Ah, oh, yep, doesn't look like he's taking him out. Yeah, too easy. Seven in a row. Ah, the streak ends. That's fine, a one-out double. He'll run himself off the bases again. Can't hold up. Ah, I'll give him third. I was looking, I was looking to see if he would have taken off. I would have thrown it, but I 
already committed to first. If I tried to throw cancel, I just would have ended up getting nobody. Come on. Big play Biggio. Nice. Huge. He's starting this one off with a circle change. I can feel it. We got to be all over it. Dude. No way. I called it perfectly. I was all over it. That between that swing and our two home runs, that was the best swing. I mean, not a not a great swing by any means, but still could have gotten something. Thank God he dove, because that would have been another line out. All right, let's see what we can do with the one out double now. All right. Oh. He's arrived. He's here. JT is here. Took him a couple games, but he has finally shown up to the field. Oh, that's a good swing for that pitch. I didn't expect that. He hasn't seen a curve in a little while. Let's give it to him. There we go. We're counting outs now at this point. Six to go before we can lock this one up. There is a part of me that kind of wants to take Porcello out. Because I feel like it's usually this time of the game where he starts... To lose it but also with how much he's struggling I kind of don't want to bring in anybody else Craig he showed up after the first I was sitting on that pitch all the way and I actually got it that makes me feel so much better about not taking Porcello out now we got a little bit more wiggle room and Vlad with a perfect two that's back-to-back -back perfect swings Eric Gagne all right haven't seen him in a while Oh, oh no, oh no. Uh, I saw that pitch from the beginning and I, w I just couldn't. I was too amped up. Oh, and that ends up in a, a grounder, yeah. It, it, you're gonna have to trust me. <laughs> that curveball didn't fool me. I just didn't have patience. Oh, what are you gonna do with that? Nothing. That's the answer. Oh, there we go. Hit number four. Bloop number four for him. That is literally a thousand stubs we've missed out on now because of bloop hits. No, don't do this to me. At least it's going foul, but Vlad? Nice. And he can't hit that one. Too far in the dirt, Porcello. Eight innings. We're giving him the final inning. All right, he's got Kimbrel coming in. Hopefully we can give Porcello a couple more runs here. Just so we can feel even more comfortable. Ooh. Ah. Oh, no, 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 no. What? JT? Again? Oh, I thought that was going to get caught. It's been worth the wait, man. Three for four finishes a triple shy of the cycle. And Yuli, for good measure, that was a no-doubter. Man, it was only a matter of time of him hanging curveballs that I would take one out. Should have happened earlier. Gotta make this play. He's got a little speed. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> what did he see in that? I missed way worse than I meant to. And one more strikeout to end it. Our ace man, Porcello, comes through again. A one-run complete game shutout, and I think that's what they call a Maddox? Am I right? Complete game with uh, under 100 pitches thrown? But the crazy thing is, under 100 pitches thrown, but he struck him out 15 times. How do you rack up 15 strikeouts and still throw under 100 pitches? Man, and we got like our entire offense from those four players. Nine of our ten hits. I gotta be honest, I think it's pretty safe to say we easily locked up 30,000 stubs there to get another Field of Dreams pack. With the 15 automatically, 15,000 stubs automatically for a 15 game winning streak. And with all those strikeouts, six runs, I think we got it. Oh man, guys, here we go. This was... A game let's just start in on it man we had the seven likes first right off the bat which got us 1750 and then we scored six runs for 3,000 stubs 26 total bases which honestly that might be the most we've had in a game 
but that's 6,500. Drew the one walk for 250. Got our every five hit bonus twice for 1,000. Struck out the three times, though, for negative 300. Allowed the one run for 2,500. Six hits allowed for 1,500. Four of those six hits being bloopers. Struck him out, though, the 15 times. That's good for 3,750. Then Porcello with the complete game is 1,500. The win is 1,500. And finally, being the 15th win in a streak is 15,000 stubs, bringing our total for today's game to 37,950 stubs. So we, uh, we got this pretty comfortably. We made so many stubs that we could get a Field of Dreams pack and an additional five show packs. I thought about just getting one headliner, but I mean, we're getting another really good player anyway, so I figured out we might as well get five show packs and try and build up the stub bank again. But that cost 37,500, which left over 450, which will be sent to the bank. And here we go, let's open the show packs first. Electric start to these. That's fine though, we're not, I mean, I'm not saying I don't want a good pull, but we're kind of just trying to round out, or not round out, build up the stub bank, like I said. Honestly, there's a chance I could throw Tapera in there, though. I don't know. Third pack, that's more like it. Pack number four gives us a silver, and then the last pack here. Any luck going for us? Nah. But here we go. We got another one. I kind of can't believe it. We're going to be more smart about this one, though, because we already have Kanurko on the team. So I think still if I get the, the rare round, we're going to go Schmidt because he's going to be insane at shortstop and then we have an all diamond team. And I think if I get the base round, I think I got I, I think I got to go Batansis. Even though we're still not using our bullpen that much, I think it might be more helpful to have someone like Batansis, who I think a lot of people are going to have trouble hitting versus Palmer, who I mean, yeah, he's a 96 overall. He'd be our best starter by what, like five overall points. But I don't know. I feel like Palmer has never really been somebody who's been, you know, insane, somebody that people can't hit. So I think we're going to go Dellen. I think we're going to beef up the bullpen a little bit if we get that base round. But there's still a chance we get the rare. Is luck on our side today? No. But I mean, still, we can't be upset if we're adding a 95 overall in the bullpen to this squad. So what an episode, man. For, for some reason in my head, I feel underwhelmed just after all that adding somebody in the bullpen. I don't know if anybody else feels that, but I really do think Dellen is going to be really valuable. And like, there's not a whole lot of elite relievers that are available to us for this series to begin with. I think the only headliners are Wainwright, Plezak, Rob Nen, and now Edwin Diaz. So other than those four, and then live series guys, our only hope at getting other relief pitchers are if they bring back some more of the old choice packs again in like flash sales. So it's kind of big to add a guy like this now. We don't have to rely on that. But yeah, guys, another fun one in the books. I hope you guys are enjoying this series still. I know we're, what, 25 episodes in now? But I'm, I'm still enjoying it as much as the first one. And I'm still hoping we can ramp it up, give us a chance to play in the higher divisions by playing more games each season. I think that should make things a little bit more entertaining too. But for now, that's all I've got. Make sure you're liking this video to add 250 stubs to next episode's stub count. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. We got tons of fun content still coming out. Just because Madden's out doesn't mean this game's dead, man. But that's it for me. I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.